Where am I? Where am I going? It's different here. Wherever I am, I am far away from the ends. No busy traffic, no sirens, and no mandem. And the food, well, I'll let your imagination run wild. Today, I'm in Lincoln. I'm out the ends. I'm here to meet Betty. She's going to give us a masterclass in cooking, well-known Spanish cuisine, tapas. Well, I'm from Madrid mm. and I just came here like around eight years ago. Betty was born in Madrid. She came to the UK in search for opportunities and a better life. She's going to cook all of this, but my only question is, what is tapas? Spain, especially Madrid, like when you just like going maybe like let's say five, six, having a beer with your friends, mm. they will put like a little plate like this, mm. you know, and it's just like to share. It's just like something to have in your stomach. Right. So you like don't get wasted yeah, on the yeah. drinks basically. I hate, I hate so it's food, it's, it's all very like social, it's always food around, it's mm. always uh, beer or wine, alcohol, mm. alcohol and drinks all the time. <laughs> Tapas in Spanish means to cover. It's said to have started in Seville. Bartenders would cover wine glass with a small plate in order to keep the fruit flies away. Gradually, small bar snacks started to become just as important as the drinks, and it was popular amongst the consumers. Bar owners began varying the tapas, embellishing little plates that came with a beverage. From there on, the new phenomenon known as tapas got started. Tapas is an evolution of all our foods combined, I guess. First thing is chorizo, la seed. In on putting olive oil right now because it's already like with a lot of fat. Mm. So we don't really necessarily need to put a, a lot of oil. Mm. You can put a little bit of garlic as well if you want mm. to. Mm. Um, but normally like it's already like the, seed, the, the meat is already seasoned there. Right. So we just need to like cook it on the side there till the alcohol evaporates mm. so you know you would just put it on the pan at the beginning you put in high heat like so you seal the the well you seal the let's say seal the chorizo you know nice. so i have some influence from my grandma like Your grandma yeah my grandma is from the south of spain yeah from andalusia and mm. she every summer like she will cook like in something like similar to this mm. uh, kitchen here, mm. like you know, very old, mm. and it's just like teach me some recipes, like, and I will always cook with her. You know? Yeah, yeah. So now, got it? Yeah. She leaves it on low heat and lets it simmer. For the patatas bravas, she chops potatoes and fries it until golden brown. Yeah, normally people put them in cubes. Mm. Yes. Yes. What's your favorite Spanish dish? Paella. Really? I For love sure. I love it. It's paella? Is it paella or paella? <laughs> Is it paella or paella? No, no, no. I need to like clarify this, yeah? Yeah, please. Pa, e, ya. No, 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 with an accent. Like word, no, okay. paella. Paella. Yes. Paella. Paella. I've been saying it wrong all the time. My like whole every. Life, then. Yes. My I'm best friend. Paella. Every time he says paella, paella. No, no, no paella. We're killing, it. we're killing the Spanish language. Killing. <laughs> Everybody says paella. I just don't get it. Paella. 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 
she adds hot spicy sauce. I know that this show is probably earning that title of it being a family show, but a quick disclaimer. If this, you will have a big shit tomorrow, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's what I said. I think Betty is gassing. She doesn't know me well at all. I'm 17 episodes in. I have developed an incredible amount of tolerance when it comes to spice. This, for me, is like ketchup if you're comparing it to shit -o. I slice the potatoes like this. <laughs> for the tortilla, she peels the onion layer by layer, fries the onions until golden brown, removes it from the pan. Most Spanish food is not like fancy or anything, you know, it's very traditional, it's very like with things that you can have yeah. everywhere. Just cook differently. It's very simple. Look, look, I can't it's lie like, to you. It's very simple. It's very simple and very tasty. very tasty. It is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Fries the thin sliced potatoes and seasons it. Who makes the best tortilla? My mom, for really? sure. Yes, my mom. Better than your grandma? Yes, Ooh. yes. My grandma makes uh, You're in trouble when you go more back. of traditional um, recipes from that area, from the south of Spain. I put like one egg, like potato that I used. Right. She risks the egg along with the potatoes and then fries it. Watch the techers. Pressure's on Betty. Thousands of people are watching. Can she do it? Of course she can. It's like watching Lionel Messi at New Camp. It's a spectacle. It's beautiful to watch. The croquetas. A French dish that has taken many forms around the globe. She fries the onions and adds flour. So I, I normally do this, you know, and I just see like if, if the flour has covered all the onion pieces that we chopped, you know. So if it covers like this, and now it becomes like this, yeah. now I feel like it's the time to add the milk and I start to stir it like this. So now all this flour that is attached to the onion like is gonna like become more thick and thick and thick. Once it becomes thick, she adds chicken and the cheese and takes the pan off the heat and the heat from the pan allows the cheese to melt into the sauce it's in the fridge straight away because mm. it's like it was it's bad for the food it can ruin the food and everything so we just let it cool and then when it's a good temperature we just put it back you know like right now has like steam rising. steam coming <laughs> What's the national dance in uh, Spain then? Uh, I would say, no, that's Argentinian. <laughs> Edit that. Salsa. Is it salsa? Salsa is a Cuban. Okay. <laughs> I would say, Paso Doble can be one of them. I don't think it's like that. No? That's I'm, flamenco. I saw it on the street. Like dancing. flamenco. <laughs> yes, flamenco yeah, is like, like that. Like. And her robot isn't bad as well. Once it has cooled down and taken out of the freezer, she puts in the egg, coats it in breadcrumbs for it to be fried. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a long ass process. Spanish cooking requires poise, finesse, and sometimes teamwork. She fries the croquetas, and after a couple of hours, we finally sit down to eat. Amen. You know? Where's the ladies one? Oh, sorry, I thought you... Uh, you see? Oh, no, no, Please, God. ladies. Oh, my God. Get I'm yourself finished. a gentleman. I am finished. <laughs> He's finished. I'm done for. <laughs> that's it. All the women are going to come out. He's finished. <laughs> I'm sat down with the lovely Betty, um, who's cooked us a Spanish banquet. You know what I mean? She's gone to town with it. So I got tortilla, mm -hmm. Spanish omelette. Yeah. We got patatas bravas. That's right. And we got chorizo a la sidra, mm -hmm. which is um, chorizo like cooked with cider. Yeah. And these are croquetas. You may like call it croquettes. Mm. No, I love it. I love it. Look, this, the tortilla, mm. Jesus Christ. I don't think I've had tortilla like this ever in my life. Mm. And already it's like pillows in my mouth. <laughs> Honestly, pillows in my mouth. Man, it's so good. 
My star mm. dish has to be the chorizo. Obviously, the Tyson Bravo is it bangs in it. Oh, it's really spicy. Very spicy. <laughs> I love it. But this, do you know why? It's tender. You know, for chorizo, I was expecting it to be like very yeah, chewy. It's very tender, yeah. Tender, mm. melts on your tongue. Like a couple mm. of bites, then boom. Yeah. Disappears. I love it. Um, and you, you decided to come over to Lincoln. What made you, you know, make that move? Oh, I just feel like um, with my education, mm. um, I was a bit stuck. I was like, I felt like I was a bit restricted. Like if you want to do something, you have to take this path. And mm. I was like, oh, I'm not good at this thing. <laughs> you know, I'm not good. Like, mm. And it just like, I took like a wrong way, I say. And, my dad saw uh, an agency on, on Facebook and it was like called to come to the UK and he was like you need to go <laughs> really yeah your dad's so but cool. I was like I'm, I'm down mm. yes mm. yes mm. I was like I'm not afraid at all I want to do this mm. but the weird thing is I never looked at the city that I was going I never googled it it was the weirdest thing ever. I prepared my suitcases. I got super stressed by it. And I just prepared two suitcases. I just went to Milton Keynes. And that was my journey started there. And then she ended up in Lincoln. I can't lie. This is a beautiful city. However, during Brexit, things turned ugly. When 56% of Lincoln residents voted to leave the EU. One hour away from Lincoln is a town called Boston and 75% of voters wanted to leave the EU. As an overseas student, I wanted to know how Betty managed to navigate her way in a county that is known for being anti-foreign. It's unknown territory for me, unfamiliar grounds. Mm. You know what I mean? So you feel some type of way. Because mm. this is Brexit, but in here, man, good this, because is, this is the Brexiteer sort of town. In here, yeah. You know I mean? It is the sort of town, but at the end of the day, it's so multicultural because of our uni is really multicultural. So every day, every day, is more Spanish people, more people from every part of Africa. It's amazing, you know. How does it make you feel when you hear like, oh, you know, people are coming over from abroad and they're taking our jobs and you know we're starting to lose our Britishness? How, how does uh, that make you feel? I just don't feel it. That's that's silly. That's very silly to say. You know, but yeah, I understand that. You know, when you have a, such a big wave of people coming to, but it's like the people who is in the factory mm. sorting out your chicken. Mm. You know, as well. You know, or who is in an office typing things for you. Mm. Like, if they want to be in your country, they can be in your country. And who is they're paying taxes the same as you. Mm. That is good for your country as well. And like, economy will change everything. Like, yeah. but yeah. Has life changed um, for you since Brexit? Has, has there been, has it been difficult? No, you see like people always will have those connotations, those judgments mm. about you or like they won't say but British people is very good at saying things on the down low, right? Mm. So there will be like certain comments but nothing straight away mm. to you, you know? Um, yeah, and it's, it's, it's not been different though, mm. I think it's been the same, mm. you know. Do you feel like, because obviously you're a foreigner and, you know, you, do you feel like you have to make a claim and state your claim that because you're a foreigner you have to work harder? Yeah, yeah. And even you feel though like pressure every time. Oh yeah. Like in uni like I give my hundred percent like just to like increase my employability, like mm. do like students union stuff mm. and help with different projects or being the president of a society. Mm. Things like that. I was like, you know, like I need this on my C V because I need to work just to work extra hard mm. to have like different experiences or something that is gonna make me more employable as soon as I get uni I can just okay I don't displacement and I don't this and mm. I don't that and mm. I you know and even though I done all these things I still was rejected. Wow. Run my own business mm. you know hosted Airbnbs wow. uh, was president of society mm. and a college officer of my uni like it was crazy like I, I did a lot of things and at the end it didn't matter and I was why it doesn't matter mm. you know like 
my language skills were good. I don't think like, I know maybe it's the place, you know, like then I found a job in in London. Mm. You, you know, you can feel mm. how multicultural London is and you can feel like different parts of England are absolutely different with mm. each other, you know? Mm. So yeah. Do you feel sometimes in your guy you're unwanted? Yeah. 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 You just feel so unwanted. With everything that has been said and that's been circulating with regards to Brexit, did you ever feel like, fuck, I've got to go back home because... Oh. Well, if they kick me out, yes, what choice I have, mm. right? But did you feel like, well, I might as well go back because what's, what's left? Yeah, many people feel that way. Many people is like, oh, I'm so stressed in this country and mm. with all the coronavirus especially, like I have friends that I'm just going to go back to Spain. I'm not like, why would you do that? Mm. Why did you think like that though? Why were you saying Cause that? coronavirus is happening mm. the economies in both countries are already going down mm. you know mm. why would you do that why would you why yourself? would you go put yourself through the situation again to go back to nothing mm. if you got something that is better than here just go for it yeah yeah for me i don't think there's nothing better mm. you know I got my independence. I got what, what do I need to go go back to live with my parents? Mm. So many people have gone back to their parents, mm. and really they have the worst time because at a certain age you just feel like, oh come on, I'm 30, I can't go back to my mm. parents' mm. house. But sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, mm. I guess. But you know, I just I just feel like if I can make it here, I'm gonna give my hundred percent. Absolutely. Why go back when you you know when you've come so far? Exactly. Why can't you just move forward? To learn the language, mm. the slang. <laughs> the slang. <laughs> what slangs have you picked up? The slang what like. Slang? What slang have you picked up? Big man ting. <laughs> uh, what big else? Man ting. Big man ting. In it. I say a lot. In it. In it. Yeah, yeah. In it. In it. In it to win it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Would you say um, leaving Spain? And coming here and living on your own and being independent has forced you to be in the kitchen a little bit more. And yes, for sure. Do you think if you were in Spain, you would have? You wouldn't have yes, had, because had, I would always get very mad with my mom because she was like, I was like, I want to cook this or I will buy a mm. kitchen book, and she was like, Oh, um, were you making that? Mm. You know, or I was like into Italian food a lot mm. because I traveled to Italy twice. Mm. And I'm like, mm, I just love to do different things in mm. Indian, mm. Italian, whatever, Chinese mm. especially. And, uh, and I started with Italian food and I was like, I can make pasta better than you, I'm going to prove it to you. <laughs> so um, yeah, I started with that really and I started with pasta and tried to do it on my own and to cook for my family, mm. you know. But yeah, obviously when I came here, yes. Madness, listen. You've just joined me, you've listened in, you tuned in to me and the lovely Betty, getting to know uh, more about Spanish cuisine. Also, also, getting to know about Betty, you know what I mean? And Thank it's you. very interesting to, to hear uh, someone who is from, you know, Spain, part of the EU, they've come here and, you know. No more EU. No more EU, and it's, and it's mad, and it's mad, and it's, it's good to get your <laughs> sort of insight on the whole situation. Yeah. You know what I mean? But listen, thank you very much for this meal. I really appreciate it. Um, took fucking long though. Please, Master Chef, if you're watching this, take this as my audition. Suscríbete, like, y comenta en el video. Listen, subscribe, like, comment. That's the translation from what she just said there, innit? Listen, thank you very much for joining us on This Food Bangs. Bang, bang.